So today's job is gonna to be to get the insulation down for the floor and make a start on lining out the van. First job is gonna to be to shift the van forwards and then empty all the junk that I've been gathering in there over the last few weeks. Okay, we've got the insulation boards which I've been storing in here. These are 30 mil Celotex, which uh, I'll get onto in a minute, but there's a reason why we had to go 30 mil. But they're gonna be used for the floor and ceiling. I'm not gonna go into crazy detail in all the insulation methods we're gonna to use. Today's mainly just gonna be about the floor, which is gonna be built up of battens, PIR, rigid, solid, rigid insulation, and, and then a plywood sub-base. And then the last job is just to remove the seat so we can have a clean sweep. Three sheets of 12 mil ply or half inch ply and that's going to be the, the layer which goes on top of the insulation boards for the floor. Now what I was struggling with is how we're going to batten out the floor because of course if we were just doing a standard 25 mil insulation board we could use any regular cheap 25 mil batten which is quite a common size. Because um, it's 30 mil I could have use strips of 12 mil and 18 mil ply and that would have given us the correct thickness and just rip those through on the table saw but I didn't really want to have to buy a whole sheet of 18 mil because I don't need it for anything else so I've ended up getting some just sawn timber it's 40 mil 40 mil by 40 square I think so we're over slightly so I'm just going to run these through in two or three passes on the planer um, I could just rip them on the table, sorry, guess, but if we put them through the planer, I need a load of um, wood shavings for the chicken pen anyway, so it it should put the plane into a good test for our first little uh, run through that. Right, so we've learned that if we want to take down timber from 44 mil down to 30 mil, we should use the table saw, not the planer. That took far too long. It needed about seven or eight passes per piece of timber, gradually kind of uh, taking it down. But now they are absolutely bang on 30 mil. I even checked with calipers, so they should be spot on with the insulation. So for me, it was really important to have a solid timber batten underneath any uh, cabinet fixings or where the bed attaches to the floor. I see a lot of videos where people have converted fans and they are just screwing the cabinets down into their plywood. Uh, and there's just something about that, I, I don't know, it's probably just me being over the top, but you know, it wouldn't take much for those to rip out. And if you do hit something or if there was an accident, things could rip out and they're only going to fly one way and then that's straight forwards um, and there's obviously no uh, bulkhead behind the seats anymore and the kids seats are there so the last thing you want is things just ripping off and it you know, be disastrous so that's why I've gone over the top maybe and got some substantial timber that we can screw or bolt down into so we're going to have those at the same depth as where the bed's going to be uh, kind of the seats I'm going to put one down the middle as well, just to give it a little bit more rigidity perhaps, because that's the main walkway. Just working out where to stop the, the floor. I think this section, which some of it's covered by the door, I'm going to leave exposed as it is. We'll just repaint that. So what I want to do is just measure up. It'd be a slightly different height, but we'll put a, a strip of timber along here 
uh, to square off and blank off the end and the insulation will sit inside that. So phase one is done, cut the battens, cut the Celotex or the, uh, the insulation board. Next job is to start templating for the plywood. Nothing stuck down yet because there's still a few tweaks to make. So the timbers I've put through the planer thicknesser and they are 30mm exactly. This Celotex is also 30mm but due to the way that the valleys are and Perhaps the fact that this may be a tiny, tiny bit less than 30, the wood is standing proud, which means that there's a tendency for the plywood to dip ever so slightly between the timbers. Now that would be fine if it was big, thick 18mm plywood, but it's not. So what, what I'm going to do is take these timbers and just put them one pass through the planer to so thickness them down by about 2mm, 3mm. So that they're almost about a millimetre less than the insulation because there is a little bit of give in the insulation and that will mean that everything's being supported on both, you know, both the timber and the boards. And then lastly, I've taken it in at the top there towards the cab and what I'm going to do is build out a step here uh, and bring it down. So that's why I finished it here so we can build a structure that will hold both the base for the table leg and also give some of your feet to go when these swivel seats spin around. We've just been down to pick up some of this uh, surface templating material. So it's thinner we can slide it under and it's going to be more accurate to cut and scribe to the walls and then we'll transfer this onto the plywood. Now I need to start sliding some template material underneath here. Uh, typically in the van that these seats actually came out of the finished carpeted floor would have been at a similar level to this template material so that this raised section would sit down onto the surrounding carpet. Um, the problem with that, I mean although that would be quite neat, the problem with that is as soon as you move the seats you've still got this humped sort of lip uh, where the rails are and although that wouldn't be a problem where the main seats are the double because they'll be in 90% of the time. This seat is an extra, so I don't want this one in all the time. And if this wall was out and we had our finished surface, uh, a finished flooring, and then this humped area, even if we put a floor mat over there, these are still going to be a, a real lump because um, this will be our walkway. So my plan is to uh, cut and recess the plywood with a router in a way that the top of these is level with the plywood so these will be sunk down into the the ply and that will just allow me to uh, to either cap off the the hole that's here or maybe just make an infill timber that slots into this hole so everything feels flat under the rug but all that takes a lot of measuring a lot of templating and probably a lot of routing and sawdust. So it's gonna be an interesting couple of hours now to get that done. And then we'll move to the back plywood sheets, which are much more easy. We can just scribe them around the wheel arches and be done with it.
I think we're pretty much set to get this out now and get the first piece cut. I'm gonna do it in two halves. So I may as well use the factory edge off two of the sides. We're going to get some tools, so we need circular saw for the edges, we need circular saw for the straights, jigsaw for the curves, and router for the rebate. Let's cut out now, so we should be able to fit it without the holes for the runners, just to check its size. Okay, so now I need to get the router, set it to the right depth so that it accounts for the lip of the r rails. So the runners fit perfectly and are absolutely flush now. Really impressed until I realised that that I put them the wrong way around. And they're not symmetrical, which means I'm gonna have to now amend the gap and leave myself with a bit of a sloppy gap here and here. I mean, I know the flooring will cover it, but just a pain when we were going so well. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of play so we can get them exactly right because the seats are a little bit fussy. So you want to make sure they're perfectly parallel before you bolt them down. With this one, because the van wall slopes in slightly, I've cut a mitre 45 all the way along there just to kind of account for that. So the next job will be to cut the two big sheets at the back. Something catching, one more fiddly bit, it's not that. The floor fit. Do you want to do your dancing? Do you want to do some dancing fake? No, it's shaky bum bum. <laughs> Had some running around dancing, it's like a dance floor in there. Apart from it being a different type of plywood, at least it's 12 mil. So when it's screwed down, it's going to be nice.
So as you saw last night, I took everything out, planed down those timbers, just so they were a few mil uh, lower than the, or a couple of mil lower than the insulation, and then went through and stuck everything down one by one. So we're just gonna empty everything back out again now and just check to make sure everything's nice and solid. You nearly got flattened there. All right, just be careful in there. Uh, there's some concrete at the back here just to push everything down and you can see there's some squeeze out and all that's nice and solid now that adhesive so hopefully that means we're all good to go so having walked around to check any squeaking it's not actually too bad but just to double check it's not touching with the um the metal just making sure that it doesn't clamp on any paper i think here you can hear it there so i'm just going to trim it, it sounds stupid but we're never going to be able to get to this once the flooring sound and I, it's just one of those annoying squeaks that might occur So although my preference is not to use any expanding foam where possible, I might have to use a little bit. Um, just in these sort of corners, just to make sure we've got no gaps at all. I've just done a little bit there. Um, and last of all, before we put the ply down, we need to tape to get our vapor barrier continuous. The foil that's on this PIR is, is a vapor barrier itself, but of course any gaps aren't. Uh, so to avoid risk, although we've got plywood, and then potentially a vinyl floor, uh, just to kind of show the the real proper build up of it, uh, we'll we'll take these joins anyway. we've got it now full vapor barrier across the van and we can now put our plywood in carefully and we'll screw it down to the battens It's half nine at night, but I'm just desperate to get this um, floor screwed down because every time I pack up in the evening, I need to put everything back in. And taking the seats in and out all the time is a bit of a faff. So I'm gonna get majority of the plywood screwed down now, then I can pack up for the night and I won't have to mess around with them again. So apart from the actual final floor covering, the floor is now done. Uh, there's a few things I've kind of learned along the way and a couple of things I'd do differently. So if I show you those now and then we can hopefully wrap this up and get ready to move on to the next phase. So it sounds overkill, but I've used close to 200 screws. Uh, that's just real belts and braces to make sure we don't have any bouncing, creaking or anything like that. I'd rather cut it out now than have to worry about it in the future and try and track down a squeak. Um, I used 35mm screws, remember we've got 30mm battens 
and a 12 mil ply. So there's a really good sort of purchase into that batten uh, to clamp everything down. And I also made sure that I was standing or kneeling and, you know, really close to the screws as I put them in, uh, which meant that everything was clamped down to start with. Where the trafficked area is, where there's boards on the ends of each other, I put in a couple of noggins, uh, kind of little battens across the way. And by screwing those down, everything stays completely flat and rigid. Here, where the L shape of the kitchen will be, um, I didn't really bother because there would be no weight on there. Uh, the, f the framing of the, the cabinets will be over the top of it. But in hindsight, I could have just stuck in a small timber just to give it something to screw to. But there's maybe about a millimetre of movement there. And the other thing is, in our build, we are boxing in the bed and units will be over the top of the wheel arches. So there was no real um, movement going to be happening here. We're not going to be walking close to it because our last batten is here. Uh, there's a, a tiny bit of bounce closer to the wheel arch. If you were going to keep it a little bit more open, then just stick an extra timber under this point here, which would stop that. Took a little bit longer than thought. I, I thought it would, but at least we know it's rigid, solid, nothing's going anywhere, no squeaks. And, you know, it's just one job done. We can tick that box. Everything's nice and ready now for when we decide on which floor covering we're going to put in. Um, I have lost a little bit of height, obviously. I'm not the tallest guy, but uh, by bringing up with the insulation height that we did, we came up 42 mil. By the time the covering's on there, or the vinyl or whatever, we'll be at 45 probably which is quite, you know, it's nearly two inches of height. So you could do it at a lot lower build up. We had the tracking to deal with with the seats. If I was doing this with just a blank canvas, didn't have to worry about seats in the back, then I would suggest 25 mil battens, which are shop sized, you know, you can just buy 25 mil timber um, roofing batten probably is the cheapest. Um, and then buy 25 mil insulation, then you haven't got to mess around with planing anything. It's a lower build up, but you still got a decent 25 mil. Well, the other option, like I said, is to sandwich. So you've got plywood on the bottom, 25 mil, and then you plywood again. Then you've got no, you've got a complete thermal break, and it's all good. Daddy. Next video coming up is going to be cutting the roof lights in, and I'm going to try and get that done today. Now the roof lights, we've got two different manufacturers. I kind of got two different models serving two different purposes. So. Give you a look at those they're both the same size so we've got one to go in here above the kitchen area one to go in back here above the bedroom area so uh, that's going to be quite an adventure cutting holes in the roof but that's it for now so if you enjoyed the video please give us a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel you can subscribe by clicking the link below make sure you click the bell symbol as well and that will give you a notification when we upload our videos and make sure you check out the rest of our videos. We've got over 200 videos ranging from DIY stuff on the house, our complete renovation of our house, and other van videos as and when we get them up. So again, thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.